Yo, what is going on everybody? Dan DanTramT here and welcome back to my tutorial series, Browser Noise. This is tutorial number 12 and today we're going to create a playhead that animates according to the sequencer step. It's going to, here, let me grab my little guy. It's gonna go, uh, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's gonna do that, right? It's, let's make it. First, I wanna show that we can call a method on our part drums called onStep. And then in that, we'll create a callback function that fires every time the sequencer steps. And then we'll go ahead and console.log um, drums.partstep. And if I run that and then press the spacebar, you can see that we have something of an incrementer that we can use for our sequencer. But let me, here, let me pull this up like this. Notice that it only goes up to 14. It goes from zero to 14. And this I think is because we're looping it instead of playing it. Um, and I also tested that metro.metro ticks has a very similar um, result if we run that. Let me just show that. Yeah, it goes up to 14. Okay, because of this issue, I don't think we're gonna wanna use drums.onstep, even though it can be useful for other things. For us, it's not gonna really work. Let's go for a different strategy. So in the same way that we created our instruments, we're gonna create a new pattern and a new phrase, and this will be a sort of sequencer instrument. Now, it's not going to make any sound, it's just going to report back the step we're on uh, at that moment in time, if that makes sense. And then we can use that to drive our playhead cursor. So let's jump to the top and declare a variable called spat, and this will be our sequence pattern, and we'll assign it to an array down here. And you know what we could do is we could actually grab this array from our hi-hat pattern and use that. And then we could do this one of two ways. We could fill this with ones like the hi-hat and get incremental values from drums.metro.metrotix and then take the modulus of that. But I want to show that we can recall an incrementer by hard quoting our array with the sequence steps. So instead of one, 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 we can just go ahead and create the, the sequence here. Six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, this is one of those rare times when we start on a one instead of a zero. So, uh, and that's because if we had a zero there, our callback function won't fire in that case. So we're going to start from a one and go to 16. And needless to say, if you wanna get some practice using for loops, you can generate this array really easily. But to be honest, you'll probably be typing just as many characters as just hard coding it in like this. Okay, at this point, we could totally define our phrase for SPAT in the same way we did it here a bunch of times for our instruments, but check this out. You can bypass that entire process, go into drums, add a phrase, and then what we would put in our phrase when we you know, uh, enter the arguments, we could just go ahead and do that directly here. So we'll call it sec for sequence, and then we'll have a callback function called sequence, and then we'll refer to spat and then let's go ahead to the bottom and define that function sequence like so. And now check this out. The first parameter of our callback, if you remember, is the scheduled time point to trigger the step on an accurate clock. The second parameter, uh, which we haven't dealt with yet, is the value of the index of the array that we defined when we were creating our spat array. So we can console.log that and see what that does. Hit run, boom. Now looking at our console, we have incremental values from one through 16. And when it gets to 16, it loops back to the beginning and we can use these values 
to draw our playhead. Let's do it. So I'm gonna go to the beginning and declare a variable called cursor pause. And then somewhere in here, we shall initialize it to a zero. Cursor pause equals zero. And then we'll drop to the bottom and inside our sequence function, we will draw a rect or rectangle. Let's give it a red outline by setting the stroke to red and we'll give it a fill of red. You know what? Let's actually talk about this. I've been skipping over it every single time I've dealt with color, but if you give it three arguments like this, these will refer to R, G, B. So this first ar uh, argument will refer to the red, this second one to the green, and this third one to blue. So if we give our red full value of 255, then it'll be red. Now, here's the thing. If we add a fourth value, we can give it a little bit of transparency. This is the alpha. So if we gave it a 30 out of 255, it'll be kind of transparent. Getting back to our rectangle, it takes four arguments. The first two are the X, Y position for the top left corner of our rectangle. And so we'll set the X as beat index times cell width. It's nice that we have that variable uh, for us to use. And then we'll have the Y as a zero. And the next two arguments are the X and Y size of the rectangle and we can simply pass in cell width as our X size and height as our height of the rectangle. So let's run that, hit play. Okay, we're, we're on to something, huh? Okay, we're getting closer. Notice that we're just off by one note when we draw it. This is because we initialized our array to start at one. <laughs> Instead of zero, I know I said this is what we should do, but we, we did it so that we would make sure we could fire the callback every single beat. But our math is off when we draw the rectangle if we use values from one through 16. So we can easily fix that by subtracting one from our beat index, but just make sure you put that inside parentheses so that it happens before you multiply it by cell width. Let's run that and see what it does. Okay. Okay, now let's fix this obvious issue where when we draw a new playhead, we need to redraw the matrix in order to get rid of the old playheads, right? This is a super easy fix. All we have to do is just before we draw our cursor or playhead, we're going to draw matrix. And check this out. I'm gonna hit run and Okay, don't worry, everything is okay. Our notes are now the same fill as our cursor because we never explicitly defined the fill of those notes. We just need to go to our draw matrix and make sure that our fill is set to white and hit run. If you're like me, you might want to encapsulate all of that cursor drawing stuff into a separate function called, um, we'll call it draw, not cursor, playhead. And then inside that, we'll grab all of this and put it in here and invoke draw playhead right here. Now you'll notice we have completely broken it. <laughs> that's actually kind of funny. Um, but that's because our rectangle is looking for a variable called beat index over here. And that does not exist in this context. Only locally does it exist inside our sequence function. So a quick fix to this is to pass beat index into our draw playhead function and recreate that parameter in our draw playhead function. So let's hear that. 
All right, we're almost done, but I want to point out something very important. It's very important, but you might have not even noticed it because it's so such a small, tiny thing. When we draw our cursor, it is actually drawing a tiny bit early compared to when we hear the beat. And this is because, as you may remember, our callback functions are not quantized. They anticipate the real beat by a very small value. Um, and thankfully, we can obtain that value by calling that first parameter, which is that time value, right? And so we can tightly synchronize our visuals and our audio by, you know, there's a couple ways to do this. I think the way I'm going to do it, it for now at least until I learn about a new cool trick is just use the set time out function, which is going to add some delay for our cursor in order to synchronize it with the beat. And let's do that. So we're going to call the set time out function. That takes two arguments. The first one is going to be our callback function. And the second one is going to be an amount of time that we want to delay. Now, for set timeout, it's expecting a value in units of milliseconds. So if we want to correctly delay this, we need to multiply time by 1000 because time is in units of seconds. Now inside our callback function, we can go ahead and copy and paste our draw matrix and draw playhead and throw that in there. And now we should have tightly synchronized audio visuals. Last thing for today's tutorial. I don't know if you've noticed this and in fact, it might have been fixed by the time you, you're working on this, but as of, um, what, what day is it? June 6, 2018. Drums.stop, so the stop method on the part object, seems to be functioning a little bit more like a drums.pause might function. So, and I'll just demonstrate this by, if I press the space bar, you know, it starts. If I stop it, you know, if I stop it in the middle of the sequence, you, you'd expect it to go back to the beginning of the sequence. But when I hit the space bar again, it just, it just picks up where it left off. So something's a little bit weird about that. If you really want that stop functionality, uh, at least as of January 6th, um, what you could do is say drums.metro.metroTicks equals zero not tikes ticks there we go and now hit the space bar and then hit the space bar again hit the space bar again it starts at the beginning so it works kind of like a stop button but to be honest i kind of i kind of i think the space bar makes more sense to function as a pause button anyways and maybe we should have an actual button stop it and play it if we wanted something to really stop it so i'm actually going to go ahead and change my mind uh and go with it we're going to go with pause that's it for today we're pretty much done we i think we just want to make some slight improvements in the next tutorial i'll see you then later